Nisam Bolivnaka, I am Mori, and warm Pacific greetings to each and every one of you. Welcome to day five, the final day for the U.S. Embassy Careers Week. Uh, this week we have spoken to a number of people that are specialized in the various fields, empowering and engaging young people in terms of CV writing, job interview, as well as building your career from the ground up. And of course, we'd like to acknowledge at this time the US Embassy staff, as well as of course, uh, USP, and of course, AVI and Pacific People for taking out their time to be part of this week's long session. On behalf of the US Embassy Youth Council, we'd also like to give a big warm greetings to those of you that are tuning in live on our Zoom platform. And of course, those that are watching from our Facebook Live, we do appreciate you taking our time this uh, afternoon to be with us for the final day of the U.S. Embassy Youth Council's Careers Week. Uh, without taking much of everyone's time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Nick Kumar, who will be delivering the introductory remarks this morning. Thank you, Broderick. Um, Thank you so much. Mula, Maori, Maloi Lele, Eko Mir Omo, and Talofa. Welcome to the final day of the U.S. Embassy Careers Week. This initiative by the U.S. Embassy Youth Council began uh, with an idea to commemorate the International Youth Month, the 2021, with the theme of Youth Action for an Inclusive and Resilient Post-COVID-19 Future. This week-long career event aims to equip young people with information on U.S. Embassy opportunities, such as business programs, scholarships, and other in-country programs. Education plays a significant role in improving the individuals and communities, most importantly, our youth population. While being youths, we are at the center of absolute strength, big, hope for the best, and envision a better tomorrow. Thereof, making uneasing efforts to turn our lifelong dreams into concrete actions. The significance attached to education plays an important role in the development of young people in any society. This can be attributed to the fact that these young people must contend with difficulties posed by resource mobilization when it comes to accessing education, or in some cases, the social and cultural constraints that they face, particularly here in the Pacific region. It is with this idea that we are hosting such important events for the Embassy Youth Council so that we can connect our youth to opportunities and prospects. Over the last four days, the Careers Week has seen stakeholders such as the University of the South Pacific, Careers Hub, and recruitment agencies come and speak about the opportunities and platforms for young people through which they can build a better tomorrow. Platforms as such will not only shape futures of our young people, but it also help them become active citizens in their societies, creating a prosperous and peaceful world. I urge my fellow young people, my fellow youths, my fellow friends to make use of these platforms and connect with your prospects. Do not leave any stones unturned. Make use of the opportunities around you for a better tomorrow. And with that, I wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anit Kumar, for those remarks. Uh, we'd also like to acknowledge our speaker this afternoon, uh, Madam Violet Okave for XM. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those, for those of you that are joining in, uh, today is the last day and we'd uh, like to take this time to thank all the stakeholders that have been involved. We'd also like to acknowledge the SMBC Youth Council, of course, for bringing young people together for this important career session. Uh, today's session will be primarily focused for the primary and high school students, uh, as alluded to in the past few days. So we uh, encourage those that are watching us live, the respective platforms to take advantage of this opportunity. We we'll also have a Q&A session at the end of uh, Madam Taukave's presentation, and we encourage people that are tuning in to make full utilization of this opportunity. Uh, with those few words, I'd like to give Madam Violet of public the floor this afternoon. Thank you, Broderick. And um, welcome to all our listeners who have just joined us. Uh, we are very, very excited and we're very happy to be part of this um, Careers Week program to uh, help um, let outside, outsiders know what we actually do. And today, 
<clears throat> we are going to be talking about uh, American Spaces, the programs that we have at American Spaces, um, as well as um, one of the core uh, services that we provide, which is uh, Education USA Advising. So building a career using American uh, Spaces resources, as well as Education USA resources, um, building a career on that, those resources uh, to be successful. Uh, and we also want to highlight um, uh, US higher education. Now, um, can we have the first slide, please? Right. So American Spaces, um, it, in other words, it is like our, this is the embassy library. American Spaces are free to the public. Um, resources that we have are free uh, to the public. And uh, <clears throat> I also want to highlight that uh, the US Embassy has six American spaces because the embassy is, cre is uh, credited to five of our countries, which is Fiji, Kiribati, Tuvalu, Tonga, and uh, Nauru. Uh, we have an American space in each of our countries. And all the, the services and the products and the resources that are available at the American spaces like I said earlier, they are free for use. So if you are listening in from wherever you are in the region, please feel free to go and visit your American spaces. And because this is Careers Week, we are trying to help support you, our students, primary, as well as secondary and tertiary. Um, as you can see, because it's like, um, the embassy library or the American space is sort of like an American library, American center. Gone are the days that you have only the print resources. So now things have changed and they are now in all the American spaces, we have both print and non-print resources. As you can see from the slide, we have um, we, what we call our makerspace resources. So can I have the next slide, please? So you may be asking yourself, so what are the American spaces? We have a variety of services. We have a variety of programs. We offer a variety of events. Uh, we also um, integrate both print and non-print resources. And now that we are in this digital era, this digital age, we have uh, incorporated the use of uh, social media platforms like we have Zoom sessions. We also have a makerspace uh, resources, which uh, we also call it our STEAM resources. And they include uh, electronic snap circuits. They include online English learning games. They include um, the 3D pens or the 3D printing. Um, and there's um, a vast majority of resources. That is one of the, um, the programs that we hold with the younger audiences. So for our primary school uh, students, as well as secondary school students, uh, we have all these resources that we, um, when we visit schools or when we are invited to come in for, for um, events with schools, we take these resources and we, we share with the students. So these resources, these makerspace resources are meant to have a hands-on experience because we believe that uh, this, these days, the American Spaces wants to offer um, uh, new discoveries. So when you come in to the American Space, you discover many things. So it's not just uh, only the print resources, which we are very much used to uh, in schools, we have lots of print and we're trying to um, uh, bring in uh, technology. We uh, we're trying to bring in uh, ways that we can really um, help our students fare well in this, uh, in this digital age. So they, people discover many things, many new things that they have never used before. So um, they come 
American spaces are also places of uh, collaboration. We collaborate with many uh, organizations, with schools, many schools. Uh, we have had outreach programs and through our collaboration, we get a better understanding. We, we get a better understanding of the needs that are out there. So what the American Spaces programs does is we try and build a connection. So we like, we, we are sort of like a bridge between the local audiences that we serve um, into um, the US. So there are educational programs, there are cultural programs, there are um, maker space programs, and there are so many programs that, we, that are offered at the American Spaces, which uh, um, I would say, which are very beneficial for, the, for this generation, this upcoming generation. Uh, American spaces are also spaces for connections. We go into the American spaces and we connect with the uh, with uh, American staff. You get to learn more about the culture. It's, it's like a uh, cultural exchange. So American spaces are places of uh, of uh, discoveries, new discoveries. You collaborate with many organizations and then you hold events and then you have uh, uh, you connect to the United States. And when I say a connection, it's um, because of the programs that are offered. So uh, connections in, uh, in programs like um, uh, capacity building programs, uh, uh, programs like literacy. And there are many, many ways that you can connect um, uh, to the American Resource Center, to the American Spaces, wherever you may be in the region. A note that there is a space where you can discover new things, you can collaborate with the, with the local audiences as well as NGOs, as well as governments, um, government departments, and then you can connect with, with everyone now through virtual engagement programs. Like what we are doing now, we are connecting with everyone out there through this live um, uh, program. So the pandemic, the current challenges that we face does not stop us from connecting with you. Okay, at the American Spaces, where we have the American, we have, this is the American Center that is here at the US Embassy. We have an American Corner that is in Lotoka. We have an American Corner in Tonga. We have an American Corner in Tuvalu, an American Shelf in Kiribati, and an American Shelf in Nauru. So all these American spaces offer uh, key skills uh, development. So because of the programs that are held there. So because our target audiences are usually the um, primary school students, the intermediate and high school students, um, as well as uh, um, some tertiary uh, level uh, students, we have all these skills development programs that are offered and they come in, in, um, in the form of clubs. So our newest uh, established club is called the College Preparation Club. And that is to do with the Education USA programs that are offered at the American Spaces. Now the College Preparation Club is quite new. And this, was, this came into uh, fruition after a six week series of uh, Education USA um, uh, training, sort of like a training or outreach program. So we had a six week series conducted by our regional education advising coordinator who is based in Seoul. So he conducted, you see, we collaborated and he conducted six, uh, six week series and at the end, we are now preparing students who may be interested to go for higher education or to further, for further education in the US, we now have a college preparation club. Now this college preparation club will give you the basic idea and will give you in-depth knowledge of how you prepare yourself before you even go. Because it's not like 
you just stand up and go. No, it's good for you to know the education system, know what you need to do, especially in essay writing. So um, essay writing, filling up your application form, all these, all these um, issues you need to be aware of and you need to be well prepared for it. So this is uh, our new club, College Preparation Club. Uh, for our STEAM club, we have um, interns and um, interns that, uh, that have an internship uh, period with us at the American Spaces because we are all part of a um, because we're all part of the public diplomacy uh, team. Um, we have interns that come and work with us for a, a few, is like either three months or six months. So that program helps the interns to run um, our, some of our clubs. So we have the STEAM club uh, where we make use of the, um, the makerspace resources that uh, we have from robotics to cubelets to um, snaps electronics, uh, snap circuits to 3D pens. Uh, all these are run by the, uh, the intern that runs the STEAM club. And that, because all these uh, resources give a hands-on experience for the students. So the students get to create they get to um, improve on their innovative skills in their creativity because they touch and they, they learn. They read and they follow instructions and they build and they do. And then after they build their projects, they create others. And you'd be surprised that all those, the creativity that we have, um, our local creativity is it, it's something, it's very amazing because we have seen it and we have seen how kids just touch, build and create, and there it is. So those, we have a STEAM club um, at, um, was it, I think it was last year before COVID hit, uh, we hold our STEAM clubs after school. So after school, we have a STEAM club members come in. Remember all this is free. It's free, these are free for you to join. These are free for you to come and experience. So, and, and build on your key skills. So the students come in, the members for the STEAM club, they come in and then they are led by one of our interns and then they take projects. They build on their um, public speaking, they share, they build on their language skills, but most of all, they build on their creativity and innovation because they have, they, they just create, they build, they, they just do it. So for our book club, I think everybody's very familiar with the book club. We really need to um, highlight at this point that uh, our students, we need to have to improve on our literacy, on our reading skills. And uh, we also have storytelling programs. So we have books, um, we have print books to, for reading. And we also have online books. So we have all these resources that's available for free at the American Spaces at the US, at, here at the American Center here, but also at the American Spaces that are located in our the five countries. Uh, so we have Lotoka, Tonga, um, and, and uh, Kiribati, and Nauru, and uh, Tuvalu. So now our debate club. Uh, during one of the of the of the interns uh, pro, uh, that uh, participated in our program, she did a a really successful debate club, and that they look at issues that we really need, especially issues that uh, affect um, our students, affect uh, society. So they build on their public speaking and the and their presentation skills and they debate on issues. We, it, we, it's a good platform, this debate club, it's a good platform to really build on your skills, especially your public speaking and your presentation skills. We have a movie club. For those who have participated in our movie club, um, usually uh, we have a movie uh, to highlight one of our 
uh, American holidays or uh, movies to highlight uh, um, issues or, or, or um, a, like a remembrance, uh, ob uh, remembrance or observance day. So we have those uh, movies, uh, we screen those, and after that we have discussions. So I just want to highlight at this point that all these skills development uh, opportunities, they are all, all the programs that we hold here at all the American spaces, we hold it in the English language, just to help us, um, our students, help all of us improve on our uh, speech, on our understanding, and then, you know, get your confidence in the English language, speaking the English language, because that's the one language that really connects all of us. So we highlight now that all these skills development, all conducted in English. And so we, we would like you to be part of this. Um, we have a database. We have a research database that is also free, free to use. Now, if you, if you have used a database before for maybe those that are in uh, high school or in a tertiary level, then you know that it's very expensive to subscribe to, uh, to databases, whether it be books or uh, journals or research or um, articles. Or, but we have a database called eLibrary USA. And with this database, it is also free. But the thing is you need to come and use it here. And the eLibrary database gives you access to online resources. And one of, the, one of them is quite educational for the primary and secondary level. And this is the one to build on your literacy and reading skills. So we have, it's part of this database. And we have online, online books that uh, you, can, you can use for free. So for all the educators and all the students out there, please feel free to contact us if you're interested. Um, to use our e-library database. You can do your research. We have uh, really uh, all these research um, databases that we have available in this uh, e-library USA portal. You can also improve on your writing and your research skills by using this. So um, at this uh, point, I would like to invite our um, American Corner Coordinator, Varani Sesi Tusanga, who runs our American Corner uh, in Lotoka. Thank you, Vara. Inaka Violet. Mbula um, vinaka to all our viewers uh, from around the region. Um, uh, the session, my session this afternoon is on uh, primarily on American Corner Fiji. My name is Varani Sesi Tusanga. I'm the librarian for the Western Regional Library, Lotoka. I'm participating in this uh, platform in my capacity as the coordinator of the American Corner Fiji and uh, an advisor for Education USA. Uh, there are about 650 spaces in about 150 countries uh, worldwide uh, that hosts uh, American spaces. A brief history of the American Corner in Fiji. Uh, this corner was established in uh, 2005 in partnership with the Department of Library Services under the Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts, and is located in the um, Western Division, in the Western Regional Library in Lotoka. As uh, Mr. Okave had alluded to earlier, uh, programs at the American Corner, like our counterparts worldwide, are free and open to the public. Uh, we provide a, a welcoming environment where visitors can learn about the United States uh, through programs and lectures, uh, interact with uh, visiting personnel and groups from the U.S. hosted at the corner, as well as through books, movies, magazines, and online resources available at the American Corner. Um, Mr. Kabe was uh, speaking about our core functions of the American spaces. Uh, I will just be elaborating more on the activities or programs that we have uh, had uh, since the corner was established. 
uh, one of the activities that we host here at the corner um, is the uh, literacy activities for students. Um, and this is uh, organized with our partners from the Rotary, Rotary Club Lotoka. Uh, they come in to help us every Saturday with student uh, with uh, children activities. And most of these activities are based on uh, monthly uh, thematic programs, uh, providing a platform where students can uh, learn new things about uh, uh, environment issues. And uh, all these programs, as Violet had alluded to earlier, are conducted in the English language. We also hold STEAM programs in the corner for students uh, every Thursday afternoon after school. Uh, STEAM education is uh, an approach to learning that uses science, uh, technology, engineering, the arts, mathematics as uh, access points uh, for guiding stu uh, students um, into uh, inquiry, dialogue, and critical thinking. What, the exciting thing about STEAM is this uh, uh, is a hands-on approach to students where they learn uh, practical activities uh, to achieve an outcome instead of a theoretical approach alone. We have a lot of students that come in uh, to enjoy this uh, activity every Thursday in the corner. This was a pre-pandemic uh, period, and we know that this will continue after we've uh, gone through this uh, pandemic phase. Uh, we also have organized community activities, uh, mainly with the Koroi Pita community in the outskirts of Lotoka, where we organize uh, educational activities for the children and uh, Education USA sessions for our high school students there. We host um, uh, programs for visiting US personnel. We have had uh, artists in the past. We've had... Uh, a group from uh, one of the U.S. ships that have come in to speak to students about uh, working in the U.S. and studying in the U.S. We also uh, coordinate with the embassy in organi uh, organizing cultural exchange programs. Uh, a few years back, we had uh, organized a um, uh, cultural exchange program with uh, a... Uh, a remote village in the Mbatikina, the village of Navala, where we took a visiting American uh, Indian tribe where they showcased their traditional dances. And this was also reciprocated by the village where they showed uh, our visitors um, the traditional Fijian dances. So it was a cultural exchange program. We also host session for we, uh, women uh, graduates in the Western Division. Uh, here at the American Corner, we also uh, participate and co-host the workshops for American Spaces for our uh, uh, regional colleagues, where we meet together and uh, where we present and share ideas on the programs that we hold uh, annually in the corner. Now, all these programs um, are organized to educate the students uh, on English learning and uh, to discover uh to help in the discovery about the u.s leading to the main uh, activity uh, that is highlighted in our program today and that is education usa as i have alluded to earlier i'm also an education advisor for education usa and here at the corner we offer counseling services on uh, education opportunities available in the u.s we have uh, online resources and printed resources for Education USA. We also participate with the U.S. Embassy on uh, information sessions on Education USA in uh, institutes around the West and schools in the Western Division. We also have uh, virtual sessions with uh, we organize virtual sessions in school with the U.S. Embassy uh, personnel, where the students can uh, are free to ask about education opportunities, about uh, visa applications to uh, the embassy staff. We also offer one-on-one uh, one -on -one session counseling. And uh, we also invite uh, uh, alumni from, uh, we use uh, Peace Corps who are uh, working in the Western Division uh, from the US to share their experiences on uh, studying in the US. Now, um, 
that's about uh, the gist of the programs that we uh, have here in the Western Division at the American Corn of Fiji. Um, as I've said, it's in the Western Division. For those of you who are tuning in and live in the West and would like to visit us, we are located at the Western Regional Library, uh, 270 Tavewa Avenue in Lotoka, right beside uh, the fire station. Our operating hours, which will resume when we return to normalcy. Uh, from Monday to Friday, we open from 10 to 4 p.m. And on Saturdays, we open from 8.30 to 1 p.m. Uh, and that's a wrap from American Corner Fiji. And uh, we hope to see you uh, if you wish to visit us at the corner when we resume our services. Thank you very much, Vera, for that um, insight into the services and uh, resources and programs that you have at the American Corner. Um, next slide, please. Uh, okay. So... Uh, part of the services as well that's offered at the American uh, spaces is capacity building. And um, I'm really happy to, to note uh, at this time that uh, we have just concluded a three week. If you see your screen right now, that picture on your right, you will see that's our partnership with Legacy International and the Bureau of, um, of uh, Education and Cultural uh, Affairs. And uh, we have just concluded a three week virtual engagement uh, with, um, with all our students from uh, these selected students from Tuvalu, Tonga and Fiji. So we also offer capacity building on um, um, topical issues and one of them uh, we have we recently held a, um, a media digital and information literacy workshop that was held last week and uh, we had over 70 participants um, and this we try to build um, we try to build um, uh, our our society to be aware um, especially for for librarians um, for educators and for media. Uh, we want everyone to be aware that, you know, there is a lot of information out there online, but we need to be able to, um, with, the, with the young people and the students that we work with, we would like to uh, share with them or impart to them the skills that they can, um, um, that they can use and or utilize so that they are able to know which um, information they're accessing, whether it is uh, genuine or not. Um, they need to be able to have the skills to fact check things that they, that they access online for either their projects or their assignments or their research. But like, those are the kind of things that we offer. So recently we had a, um, that was the workshop that we had last week. Um, we also have, um, uh, we had held, um, we used the interns. Well, our interns have participated in capacity building um, here at the embassy. So at this time, I would like to invite our former intern, Triveshni Sharma, to share her experiences. Thank you, Ms. Violet. Um, hola, everyone. I am Triveshni Sharma, and today I will be speaking about the internship opportunity which is offered by um, the U.S. Embassy and my personal experience, like, because I had been a intern last year, I suppose, yes, last year, um, um, last semester. Um, I had applied right at the end for the internship, thinking I probably wouldn't get it, but um, luckily I did. And it was, and like, it was a really good opportunity because, like, um, I, it's not that, I just learned things. You actually develop a lot of skills when you're um, interning. So um, basically the embassy offers the internship uh, opportunity twice a year and they take um, about four interns per um, term. So when I started off, I had three other girls with me who were interns and it was it was such a lovely experience because um, while you're actually um, working, you get to meet other people. And when you're working with them, you learn like from them as well at the same time. So um, 
uh, when you're doing an internship, you're actually required to do at least uh, one project before you leave. So b- before your um, internship term ends, um, so it's either three months or six months. I think mine was about four months. I had like an in-between um, um, internship uh, period because of other stuff. Anyway, so um, you're supposed to do one project before you leave. So um, one of the other interns, um, Miss Na- yeah, Miss Nami, she basically um, took ch- uh, charge of this team club. So um, every every Monday, I, yeah, every Monday, um, um, uh, students, uh, primary school as well as high school, they would all come from um, their schools, like after school, and they would come to the um, American Center in the embassy, and we would all help Naomi um, facilitate the STEAM club activities. So basically, um, there are a few toys there in the embassy, which uh, you can use to like um, uh, stimulate your brain. So like while you are having fun, you are also in the process of learning. So it was actually really fun. Like for me, I, I really like this um, 3D doodle pen because I really like drawing. So it was so funny. We, we will all try to go and make like an Eiffel Tower and it was like strategically but it was funny because um my Eiffel Tower was such a flop <laughs> but yeah and um there were other stuff like the snapper circuit um um thing so basically you get like a manual and you kind of have to um figure out how to place what circuit where and to make um uh, the um electricity flow and like it was not just like something boring but like you would have to like see how everything goes together and then we would like shoot parachutes and stuff and it was it was it was really entertaining but at the same time when you're reading through the manual you realize that you're also learning about different stuff so it was very educational so i wouldn't say like it's only meant for people who are like in high school or younger it's 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 also for people who are actually older as well because like you still do learn stuff you know so um so apart from the steam club activity that i helped facilitate um uh, the other and intern so i basically had to do one project so um i wasn't very sure what to do at first because you first have to like submit a proposal of what you're supposed to do so um i actually wanted to do something which was in my interest as well which also um, um co- like uh was in line with the um embassy uh uh what do you call it um their guidelines yeah um so the things that they actually would want you to do so um i was i am actually a small business owner i own the creativity i sell handmade cards i have a few examples here so as you can see this is a handmade card that i made as well as this so basically i wanted to um uh, I wanted to go out and meet other women who are also like uh, having their own small business or those who are actually thinking of venturing into um, like getting their own small business. So what I did was I asked um, the, my uh, supervisor if I could actually hold a um, an interactive workshop with uh, basically other women who were also in the small businesses um And, and actually I got, I, there was, they said it was perfectly fine. So during, um, I think November, I basically um, uh, put up like a whole presentation. So I didn't want it to be like a really boring presentation where I go, I speak to a few people in front of me. I present like lecture, like um, like slides and say, oh, this is this, this is this. I want to be interactive. So what I did was um, I decided to make it like um, session A would be me presenting about my business and like stuff about it, like the difficulties faced during the pandemic and how I overcome, uh, overcame it and stuff. But apart from that, I had like another session. And in that one, it was more of like me helping the other women in the room build on the skills that I had taught myself. So what I did was um, after I presented, I basically went out to the women and I taught them like things. And it was kind of funny because um, the workshop I held, like I, so I was 23 at that time actually I still am 23 oh my god <laughs> so yeah I was 23 and then um when when I saw the women coming in I realized that they were much older than me so they were like probably 43 um 33 only a few cut like maybe like a two or three were like my same like around the same age as me but apart from that they were like like quite older than me so I felt really intimidated when I had to go up and speak in front of them because I was like what will a 23 year old talk to them? like people who are so much more older and wiser about but in the end it was actually super fun because um after I presented like um I could see that they actually took down notes because I realized that we all have like something to learn from each other like I taught them about like social media advertising through the social media platforms such as Instagram Facebook and it was really good because while I was doing this like while they were learning from me I was also getting things out of like from them as well and um when presenting I realized that um 
it was it was really fun because then they were like oh what is so you can do this and that and i realized that like a lot of people don't know about a lot of things like so like from like because like when you're like in a gen z you realize that you know more that which and, and a person who's like a probably like a boomer would not know and it was it was really funny but it was really good so in the second session i basically taught them how to quilt so um i have an example i have example of a quilt card so as you can see this is quilt so basically uh, quilting is taking um, a piece of paper and rolling it together and sticking it together to make shapes so this is another one it's, it's not done but as you can see it's quilt flowers for a unicorn so um for an hour I taught these ladies how to quilt and it was funny because when they first looked at me they were like what is quilling and I told them they were like really and then when we started doing it one of the ladies came up to me and said hey thank you so much for teaching me this and I was like oh it's, it's, it's okay and she said I will actually in this into my business so she started using quilling with making earrings with resin and stuff so that was really amazing because I didn't know that what I knew like just making cards could actually help someone else with their business. So um, I had a lot of fun. And when I was trying to get over the um, bit about my age being really like young and everyone else being so much more older, I realized that I was actually helping myself gain more confidence um, when talking in front of a lot of people. So it was actually really good. So when you're doing projects, you don't really just learn stuff, you also build your skills. And that is something that you get out of the project while you're also giving back. So that is something during my um, uh, um, internship that I did and it was actually great because I networked with a lot of people and like to date I still keep in touch with them and like I see their businesses growing and it's so nice um and yeah it was actually really good because when you meet other people who are also doing same the same stuff as you or in the same line you actually realize that um you're not the only one facing difficulties because when COVID hit um so uh I was, I didn't have as many orders for cards that time because, of course, people are losing their um, jobs. So, And it was a difficult time for everybody in general. So when I talked to these people about it, I realized I wasn't the only one facing these hardships. And then I got to know more about how they were overcoming their hardships, which I could take from them and then apply it into my own business. And it was it was very informative and very good. So if you are thinking about applying for the internship and you're not sure, I would definitely encourage you to do it because while I was very worried that I was like, should I apply? Should I not? It was literally like the due date was just like probably today at 10 p.m. And I submitted my application at like, what, 8 p.m. I was just, I was so hesitant and I was like, nah, I won't get it. But like, the thing is that you just apply and you try and go for it because at the end of the day, you might get selected or you might not. And there are four opening, openings. And if you do get in, it's a it's a great opportunity. Um, and because of my internship, um, like performance, I, like my performance as an intern and the success of my workshop with the all these um twenty, uh, I think it was twenty ladies that came to the workshop. So with everything and then how I was as a person um uh, I was able to join the U.S. Uh, Embassy Youth Council so it's like through this internship many doors does definitely open after you network and um I was able to join the U.S. Embassy uh, Youth Council and it was really refreshing because I'm I met like more than like 20 people and it was really refreshing because I was seeing different youths in my community like not just from one place like from Singitoka, Navua, um, Lotoka and um, Suva they were all like in one place and we were trying like to think of different things on how we could help take action and like help the other youths in our community so it's it's like the internship with the U.S. Embassy is like a stepping stone and because like if you take this opportunity, you are definitely able to um, uh, open more doors for yourself. So it helps you in more ways than one, like whether it be your, like learning something new, learning new skills, developing your skills, um, um, polishing your uh, presentation skills or building your own confidence. But you actually realize that you um, as a person are able to do more with this opportunity. And it's actually really good. And I would definitely recommend anyone to try and apply and get in. So yeah, that's all I had to tell you about my um, experience as an intern with the US Embassy Cup. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Triveshni, for that. And um, that the internship is part of the of the public diplomacy programs that's offered. And most of the interns um, uh, work together here at the American Center. Um, like she said, uh, she has trained. She was able to 
participate in a training as well as offer um, tips, uh, uh, the challenges uh, she faced, the benefits. So she was able to participate in another workshop for women in uh, small business, small businesses. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Um, okay, whilst uh, we're waiting for the next slide, um, I, one of the core, like I said earlier, one of the core services that we provide here is Education USA Advising. And for Fiji, we have two Education USA Advisors, and that is Vara, who is uh, at the American Corner, uh, as she already mentioned, and I am the other one here in American uh, Center Suba. So Education USA programs, they are, um, it's global. Um, Education USA, there are over 400 uh, uh, advising centers and uh, all the American spaces under post, they are education advising centers as well because they already, they have the basic resources that you, you need to um, check it out. Uh, you need to go and browse through and because they are in all the American spaces that are around the region, they are also advising centers. So if you are listening in and you would like to know more about the Education USA program, please feel free to contact your, your American spaces and, and advising centers. So Education USA program is a program offered um, in all the American spaces. Um, this is a program that is uh, for mostly for, for those who are really looking for an opportunity for higher education in the US. So to prepare yourself for, for an education in the US, um, there are five basic steps. And I will briefly go through the five basic steps. The very first step is uh, doing your research, researching your options. Now in researching your options, you need to do it at least, um, if you can, say one or one and a half years before you, are think before you actually go. So researching your options is very important. This very first step. What you can do is you can reach out to the American space that is closest to you, and then you could um, ask them for the, for the resources that they already have. Or you could go online if you have internet access. So you research your options because you need to research a lot of things. You need to know, okay, so what program are you, are you interested in? Which university? Remember in the US there's thousands and thousands of colleges and universities that's available. There is definitely one out there that suits you. The thing about researching your, the college, the best college for you, is that you need to know that um, you need to select, you need to go through, browse, go through all the universities and colleges that are out there and select the one that suits you best. Select the one that, if, say for example, uh, location matters. Location matters because if you prefer um, uh, the weather or you prefer the environment that is similar to us in the Pacific, maybe you would try um, uh, maybe Hawaii, which is so close to us, uh, similar weather. Um, if you would like to experience uh, snow or the cold or the four seasons, then you might want to um, look at the universities that are uh, in the colder regions, you know, that are probably really, really cold, say maybe six months of the year or so. So um, what, um, what the research, the first step uh, um, requires you to do is you can always visit the, the American space and go through because the resources are there or you could go online. So as you can see from the slide, there is the Education USA um, URL. So the website uh, URL is, is down there, but that's the first step. 
know where to go and get your um, the information that you want. So you're researching your options and finding the school that matches you, finding the college that uh, suits your interest. So what we advise, we as education advisors, we guide you through this process. So we lay down the options for you and you make the selection according to what you would like. Um, step number two is financing your studies. So everybody, I think uh, just about every session that we have had, this was the step that everyone is most interested in. Because of the, challenge, the current challenges, finance is, um, is uh, one of the uh, financing your studies. So getting a scholarship or getting financial aid, looking for um, maybe uh, financial assistance for international students, because we are all international students out in the Pacific. So if you want to go up to, um, to study in the US, this second step, financing your studies, we will go through. It's always good to invest in yourself, but it's, it's also good to look for where you can get assistance from. So um, in this step, we will uh, let you know, okay, all the scholarship opportunities out there. And there are many, many scholarships um, available for international students. The thing is, we do not research enough or we do not know where to look for. So at the American spaces, at the American corners, wherever you are, go to your American space and they can show you where, uh, whether they have, they'll show you the print resources or they'll show you the online one on a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, it's um, uh, step number three, very briefly, completing your application. Okay, so completing your application, you know that uh, filling an application form is not easy. It, sometimes it's a very long form. It's not just a one page. So before you um, start um, filling your form, start gathering your documents. Start your, your put your C, putting your CV together, uh, start gathering your uh, transcripts from uh, school, uh, from universities and uh, putting them all together, getting yourself ready. Step number four is applying for your student visa. Now that's where you need to work with uh, the embassy because of uh, your student visa. Remember that all these take time. So it's always good for you to prepare in advance. Okay, so feeling applying for your student visa, please, I want to reiterate, always put in the accurate information. Okay, so, and, and the final step, this I'm, I'm saying it very briefly, but if you go down to the website that is written, it's there in more detail. However, if you want to know more about the five basic steps, we are an advising center and you are most welcome to either give us a call or we can communicate uh, through email uh, or a virtual presentation and go into much more detail. So, Preparing for your departure, which is the final step, is um, before you leave, there's always like a pre-departure orientation. So uh, we will give you advice about the college. We will give you, okay, so um, we'll give you resources that will prepare yourself uh, when you do arrive in the US. So those are the five uh, basic steps. And um, for our recent six week uh, Education USA virtual series that we conducted, we were able to, um, our REAC, our Regional Education Advising Coordinator, which is REAC in short, Vincent Flores, he was able to get two colleges, two US colleges, and they speak uh, and they talk about um, uh, life in campus. So we were very lucky that one of the colleges, Lane Community College, had an international student there who spoke to these uh, um, to the to the group of uh, participants that attended and shared his experience, and that resonated really well with our local students because he was an international student, and he was he was very successful. He has now graduated from Lane Community College, 
and has gone to Florida to go for a university. So th that is what will happen if you, um, uh, but if you are interested in Education USA programs, please feel free to let us, um, let us know. And so we can be liaising and, and uh, showing you how you can go about, um, especially going in depth with you on the five steps. Like I mentioned earlier, our college preparation club, which is targeted at high school students, you are, um, you are most welcome to participate and be part of the, the preparation, uh, preparation club where you will be taken on an eight weeks period of intense learning and preparation for, for higher education in the US. So at this time, I would like to invite one of our very own um, public diplomacy staff. He, he spent time studying in the US and so we, he will share his uh, experiences now. So can I invite uh, uh, Mr. Sola Fiji? Thank you. Hi, hi, can you guys see me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Hi, uh, for, for our regional students, uh, just a little um, introduction about myself. My name is, uh, is Solo Fiji. Um, so uh, like Ms. Violet said, I spent a little bit of time uh, in the US. Um, just uh, uh, in the US, um, I, I, I got educated here in Fiji at the University of the South Pacific. Uh, from then, I, I moved to the U.S. and I, I joined the, the the U.S. Marine for a little bit. I worked a little bit for the federal U.S. federal government um, Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, and during that time, um, while I was working, I was also uh, uh, going to to a college in the U.S. Um, and um, um, just just a couple of reminder if people are, are interested in um, in going to the uh, go study in the U.S. Um, one of the very important points that Ms. Violet has highlighted is that uh, you need to do your research uh, because there's lots of colleges in the U.S. Um, try to find uh, uh, colleges that offer uh, classes that of interest. Um, and then you follow the steps that Ms. Violet has highlighted um, because um, that's one thing that um, that's very important is that when you attended, I, I guess in general, is that when you attended college, um, you need to, to do classes that you are very interested in. Um, so I attended a Skyline College and Skyline College, I did uh, um, business administration. And at the same time as well, I learned some technical, I, I was doing some technical courses um, like solar installation and things like that. And for, for the US, one thing I really like about the community college that I was at is that they do offer technical courses and uh, and for me, uh, taking up solar installation and things like that, it was uh, actually a life skills that um, I was very interested in. And through that learning process and through that experience, I, I can do my own solar installation and things like that. And another thing that um, to keep in mind as an international student going to the US is that um, when you go, if you ever accepted into college, um, um, it's very important that um, that you try to make friends with people. There are lots of programs for international students, uh, lots of um, of trips that are offered for international students, and these are the kind of groups that you want to join so that you can actually experience while going to college. You can also experience the full cultural, uh, um, I guess, experience that the U.S. offer. Um, from my experience, um, uh, the college that I went to. Uh, there are lots of uh, Pacific Islanders as well. You meet a lot of Fijians, the, the Tongans, the Samoans, and other uh, Pacific Islanders. Um, and you can see that um, um, they gravitated towards um, these kind of programs because the particular school that I went to, they offer lots of, uh, of sports activities and things like that. So that's um, one thing that kind of like bring us together. And then when you get over there, then you get to know, know people. Um, for the financial aid, um, for the for the for the tuition for going to college, I was lucky enough that um, that um, um, I my 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 school was paid for uh, by uh, through the kind of work that I was doing. So that was one lucky thing for for me. But um, 
as, as students, like Ms. Violet has said, um, there's lots of um, financial aids available and um, lots of, um, yeah, available for, for students in, in general and especially for international students. And for you to learn about those programs and how to apply for those financial aids, I, I, I would highly encourage people to attend um, the, the eight weeks program that um, Education USA and Miss Violet and the team are offering. Um, and because that is a, a really good platform for you to learn about different colleges and also to learn about all these uh, financial aids available. And bear in mind, um, different schools offer different aids, uh, financial aids to different group of students. If you're international students, you probably qualify for different, um, a different aid program compared to like uh, any other, like if you were just an American. But um, for my experience, I would highly recommend um, going to, to school in the US just because the experience is different. Um, there's a lot of, apart from the education itself, um, you know, the US is so diverse in culture. And that's one thing, one good thing about uh, attending those kind of colleges as well. Um, you learn, you, got, you get to meet other students from other parts of the world uh, as international students as well. And you kind of like learn about their culture. And um, one thing I might, another thing of my, um, take away from attending colleges is that you make friends that um, you, you meet people then you 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 be friends with and you kind of like friends for the rest of your life um yeah that's a little bit of um of um a, a little brief brief of how i went through the college in the u.s um but um one thing, uh, however, one thing I would highly recommend is that if you want to learn more about colleges uh, and how to uh, further your study in the U.S., the Education USA and our team at the Miss Violet at the U.S. Embassy are very good in uh, in offering advice and and counseling and assistance in in trying to navigate all these uh, all these areas that would be very important if you ever get accepted to any of the, uh, of the colleges or university. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sola, for that. And um, yes, what he, what he said is very true. Um, it, is a, it would be really good that if you are seriously thinking about higher education in the US, please, and you are a high school student from year, say from year nine, 10, 11, 12, <clears throat> we would recommend that you participate in the college preparation club so that you are uh, more well versed with uh, what to expect and uh, you are uh, well prepared for the education th that you will embark on. Okay, so um, can we have the next slide, please? <clears throat> So this next slide gives you all the online resources that's available for you. If you look at uh, our uh, embassy website, you will get information about the American spaces, about the education programs that we have. Um, if you check out the American spaces um, .state .gov, then you will learn more about American spaces globally. Uh, the services that are offered and the great uh, portal of resources that, uh, that they give out for free. EducationUSA.state.gov, this website, um, as um, discussed in the, or as shared with you in the previous slide, everything you need to know about higher education in the US or having an education in the US is, he, is at this uh, website. Now for scholarships, I put there just one, but there are many, many scholarship websites that's available. The thing is, please look at number eight. If you really need, if you really determine to have a look at the, the scholarship opportunities that we have for international students, please feel free to use that email to, to uh, email us and let us know uh, your queries.
okay? If you are wanting to find out more about um, the colleges and the universities that's in the US, the big future is a very good um, uh, research website that you can. Um, Khan Academy has a lot of information on, on uh, higher education in the US and uh, standardized testing that's offered. And we were just talking about the College Preparation Club. Please note that the, that is the registration link if you want to uh, register and be part of the, of the club. And please, uh, because this uh, link was open for, a, uh, for, I think from a week ago or so, and uh, we wanted just to let uh, everyone know that this is specifically for high school students uh, because it's preparing them. <clears throat> we found that there were some, uh, maybe there were, or maybe there were people who were interested to be part of it, but they were um, in their forties. And it's not that we are um, saying that this is not for you, but we were hoping that uh, we will give a chance for our younger audiences in the high schools to prepare themselves for the education. Um, and that is the contact uh, um, information for the American Center, if you're interested in. Otherwise, if you are out there in the region, please visit your American space and your advising center and uh, um, look through all the resources that we have just shared with you. So thank you very much. Um, this is the end of our presentation on uh, American spaces and building your career um, with Education USA. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much, uh, Madam Violet. And of course, uh, I'm not forgetting, of course, uh, Mr. Uh, Sola and of course, Madam Traveshni and of course, uh, Madam Varani Sese that's tuning in all the way from the Western Division. We really do appreciate all of you for for taking out your time to be part of today's uh, fifth and final session. Uh, while the conversations have been going on, we have had quite a number of questions that have been coming in. So let's just get right to it. Um, Madam Violet, one of the questions that we've got here from our, from our Facebook audiences is, you know, with the opportunities that are provided, you know, you know what is uh, the age limit? or requirement rather in terms of applying, you know, because, you know, as you mentioned, it's applicable for young people, but, you know, just bearing in mind the age limit eh, when, when sending in the application. So what is, uh, what is the age limit for, for submitting your applications? Okay, so that depends. See the programs that I just spoke of, like uh, say the College Preparation Club, we have it from say high school students. So that's a targeted range. If you are interested in, uh, in, in further education in the US, there is no age limit. Anyone can apply and um, you need to uh, go to the nearest uh, advising center or American space that is closest to you and uh, reach out because uh, there is no age limit for, um, for if you are thinking of really studying abroad in the US specifically. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, yeah. It does, I mean, because I think what the audience has been following during the conversations that have taken place is sort of the scholarships that you've offered. And I think a majority of the panel that has spoken this morning, this afternoon rather, have sort of touched based on, you know, doing your research. I just wanted to sort of shift this for a moment and bring in Professor because she was a former intern at uh, your, uh, at the American Senate as well. So traditionally, uh, you know, with young people, uh, you know, being as exuberant as well as uh, the future generation, and, you know, they're just really keen to get out there, you know. Traditionally, what do you think now with young people sort of being more serious about applying for these opportunities, you know, because a lot of times young people sort of wait for the 11th hour. And as Madam Violet and Mr. Saula and Madam Varani Sessi had stated that, you know, 
we have to be you have to do a thorough research and be pragmatic on that. You know, and what do you think would be your advice, Travishan, on some of the ways in which you can sort of engage young people to sort about of go the extra mile, you know, in sending in those applications, Travishan? Okay, so before Travishan comes in, um, if you were thinking about the internship program specifically, those are targeted for students in the tertiary level. Sorry, um, I think my network dropped. What was what was the question? Thanks so much, Travishni. Uh, so let me just repeat again. So Travishni, um, you. you know, you had shared about your experiences um, uh, at the embassy. Uh, what we are trying to sort of unpack here from your perspective as a young person, eh? because August is of course commemorating International Youth Month. You know, uh, Madam Violet and, of course, Mr. Saula and, of course, Madam Vani Sese had shared about, you know, if you really want those opportunities, you have to, you know, push yourself to sort of do the research, go the extra mile, you know. I mean, you know, just not waiting for, you know, the opportunities to come at you. So, you know, I just wanted from your perspective, Professor, you know, what are the ways to sort of engage uh, young people to sort of, you know, be determined in sort of, uh, taking these applications seriously, you know, just what some of the ways that, you know, knowing the specific uh, context here, you know, and how we love to leave things somewhat on the 11th hour. So what are some of the innovative uh, ways that, you know, young people can, you know, come out of that, you know, that normalcy, so to speak? Um, actually, it's kind of funny you're asking me that because I literally applied um, for the U.S. In embassy internship, like, at the 11th hour because um the thing is that i feel like a lot of people just don't really know about it and like right now we're creating so much awareness about these things like um we like the youth council all the opportunities that we're getting this careers week um and the stuff that we are holding up we are put, putting it so much out on the social media pages that now they're kind of having like a hint of what's going on about it and like they're they're realizing that they can apply for things because most of the time people are unaware as for the putting it off to the 11th hour, um, I did that. Uh, I don't know why I shouldn't have done that, but it worked in my favor. So the thing is, I would I would say that it's it's really got to do with your your own effort. Your like how much like how much do you want that thing? So. I could have just left at the 11th hour. I could be like, oh, it's nine o'clock. I don't want to go ahead with it. But at the end of the day, I was like, no, I actually want to see where I can get through with this. Even though I was doubting myself, I was like, if something happens with this, it's going to be good for me. So it's like putting yourself first, making yourself a priority and saying that, you know what, I'm going to apply today. And it's not just applying. Like you don't have to just go and start applying from anything. It's more like go and see like the... um what are, what is needed do a bit of research about like the organization the embassy what is actually required what work you'll be required to do will it, will it will you actually gain something out of it and will you give something back to the organization you know like these things have to be taken into account and that is how i think we as like people like who want to actually get out into the world and do stuff we can do these things so yeah i think a lot of um self-talk confidence motivation and research will actually help people <laughs> yeah I'm yeah, um, sorry. I would like to, to add on to, to what Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Sharma has said. You know, um, I, for for young people out, out there, like most of the of these opportunities that come out from the U.S. Embassy, we've actually been posting it on our social uh, uh, media uh, side on Facebook, on, on Instagram, and I would highly encourage these uh, young people to follow that page, just because um, it's 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 a it's it's widely used. Uh, platform and uh, the, the the information that our team has been putting on those pages are very current information, and you know when the application comes out, it's it's uh, it's you know it's it's on real time, and um, for the preparation, I would highly encourage um, do your research and and prepare in advance. That way, if you ever come up to the very last minute, um, you just have to fin finalize and finesse those little things that you need to do. But the, uh, the the bulk of the preparation, just like everything else we do in life, we need to prepare for it before we actually like send out the, the final application of the final product. That's that's my take to it. Like follow the 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 SMC uh, social media page, our Instagram, our Twitter page, and our Facebook, because the, the information that our team puts out there it's a very current and on real time information, and you can get all and you can get um ex, uh, you can actually get the information and access. Um, to that on time, yeah. 
Thanks so much for that. I really do appreciate that. Uh, once again, to, for those of you that are tuning in as well, um, you can please send in your questions via the chat uh, block here if you're on Zoom. And for those of you that are tuning in via Facebook, uh, we also encourage you to uh, keep those comments coming in. Uh, Madam Violet, there's a question here from uh, Facebook whereby it's, you know, you mentioned about the clubs that are offered. Uh, so one of the questionnaires had asked if, you know, you know, when, when you're part of a club, does the individual have to sort of pay a membership fee to be part of that club? No. For all the clubs that we have uh, just shared, all those clubs are free for the public. If you want to be part of a club, please just reach out to us and uh, we will give you the guidance for how. But it's free. There's no payment to be a member of any of the clubs. Thanks so much for the idea. Yeah, so, you know, there's also a follow-up. So, you know, when people do apply, there's no due date for that either as well. Eh? No, that's not. All right. There's that's no, great. No due date, yeah. Uh, for that. Um, I met a valid, um, you know, the work that you guys have done, you know, in the short span of time since the beginning of the pandemic has been quite uh, extensive, you know, in terms of the workshops, via Zoom and the capacity building trainings. Uh, there's a question here with regards to, you know, uh, the opportunities, uh, you know, for those that might be um, uh, living in the, you know, outside of the super bubble, so to speak. Yeah? So we have uh, questions here whereby, you know, are there any opportunities provided for young people that, you know, are residing from the other parts of Fiji, you know, and, you know, how we, how can we get involved? You know, you mentioned about the clubs, but, you know, how um, more, how much more can they be involved with some of the activities uh, provided by uh, the USMC? And Madam Violet, as you know, a lot of, uh, you know, the opportunities have sort of been super centric. So, you know, and now that we're sort of in the digital space, you know, it's sort of open for, but I guess the question is sort of coming from that angle, you know, a lot of times the opportunities haven't reached them yet. So what are your thoughts about that? Okay. So thank you very much for that question. That's a very good question. And yes, uh, because of the pandemic, we were sort of like focusing here because of uh, uh, movement restrictions. However, we wanted to reach out virtually. So if you are in the Western Division and if you have been or the North or outside the Central Division and you have been following our, um, our, our social media platforms, then you would know that we usually put out, okay, so this event is happening. If you want to participate, you could just click on this link and then there. So that was from last year to this year, the, the virtual programs that we have had, um, we had put it out virtually and we had advertised it on our social media. Uh, before pandemic hit this year, I think uh, uh, my colleague and I, we, we went all the way to the Western Division just to have, a, just to uh, showcase the, service, the services that are available and the opportunities that are available for our, for our young people, for, for actually for anybody who is interested to learn um, or who is interested to have an, an education or to or just to learn something. So we took our, we had an outreach, my colleague and I, Tale, um, who spoke on, on Monday, early this week. So we took our, our programs out um, to the West. And uh, we hadn't really planned for the, to take it out to the North, but uh, COVID hit, so that is on hold. Um, however, we please, like Sola said, follow us on our social media pages, and then you will be aware of all the programs that we are holding. Whether you could just click on this link to attend and participate in this training, or click on this link if you want to know more about uh, our English language programs, or if you want to know more about our graduate programs that uh, Esther had shared on Wednesday. Uh, all these are available on our website, as well as on our social media, um, platforms and uh, some but sometimes we also email we we send out emails to just to invite and if you are really interested and you have taken down the email address that is noted for for any issue on american spaces or education usa advising please feel free to 
to send us an email or reach out to us. We know that right now restrictions are still in place and you will not be able to visit us or we for or vice versa for us to visit you. But we can hold sessions virtually. If you're really interested, uh, for the educators out there who are listening, if you know that these, the programs that we have shared uh, are going to benefit you, the students in your class, please, by all means, feel free to reach out and we could be holding it, uh, virtual sessions for your, for your students or your young people. And please note that all these programs that we are offering are all uh, free, virtually, and the clubs are free. Thanks so much, Madam Violet, for that. Um, probably um, you had mentioned a few things about the opportunities that are provided, you know, and that the U.S. Embassy, they're providing it uh, for free, and of course the clubs are for free. One of the questionnaires had mentioned about, you know, we have a lot of, uh, they're part of various youth organizations or youth-led uh, initiatives, you know, and you had mentioned about the trainings that you guys provided, you know. Uh, do you provide those trainings for those that are in the, uh, that are running youth-led organizations? And, uh, you know, if so, what are some of the topics that you guys do? Or does, does the youth uh, network sort of advise the embassy on what topics uh, sort of are of interest in them? What are your thoughts on that? So, okay. So this, uh, what we offer is, is sort of like a collaborative uh, uh, engagement. So the youth, uh, um, that are out there who want to participate. We already have you guys and the, in the Embassy Youth Council. So, but if there's youth groups that are out there who, who feel that maybe, okay, you know, I think uh, we should uh, listen and uh, try and learn more about how we can apply to, to go and study in the US. So if they have groups like that, please, by all means, feel free to reach out. If you, your group is in the West, reach out to the American Corner there, the advising center, or you could reach out to us via, it, it, it just takes an email or phone call away. But yes, definitely we can engage with you, with the young people. And uh, for the, you, you mentioned about topics. One of the topical issues that we are trying to highlight is because today with the pandemic and the challenges that are happening and in our environment, the environment is, is, is like a big issue with us in the Pacific region. That is why we are highlighting STEAM education. There's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Because with STEAM education, then you get to be, to get the, um, you, you are create, you get create, you find creative and innovative solutions. But you also improve on your critical thinking skills. Because, um, and, and we're trying it for at a, at a young age. So we want our upcoming generation to be, to be able to have their own little projects, environmental uh, related, climate related. So we're, we're all trying to find solutions. So STEAM education is, um, um, helps in that area. For young people, yes, like you said, who are interested to participate in the opportunities, Please, by all means, reach out. We are we are all here, um, and we are all we are ready to um, liaise with you, collaborate with you, and on the services that we have just shared on the American Spaces Services um, or building your career with Education USA. I hope that answers the question, Rodri. Yes, it does, Madam Violet. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, Madam, uh, we were just talking about you know the opportunities for young people and how some of the young people in the Pacific region have benefited from that. You know, could you just tell us, uh, you know, what have been some of the success stories, you know, and, you know, uh, where are they, you know, now post the, uh, the scholarships that they have sort of participated in during uh, their time in the United States? Um, okay, so... Um for the young people that have participated in the American Spaces programs. So I, I would say, okay, for the high school students that have uh, benefited from this would be those that, had, uh, that were selected for our space camp. So because of COVID, no traveling um, these days, but uh, they, they are now all scheduled to travel next year. And because the space camp is like two, 
every year. Now we have four. So we have four of them are going together. Um, that is one of the, um, the benefits that, uh, that the, the opportunities that, will, that are there for the young people, for the high school students. Um, another one is the internship program. And that's targeted at the tertiary, uh, institute, um, tertiary students. So we put out this program and um, we have uh, uh, the students uh, um, apply and then we have a selection and then, but those that didn't apply, applied again. So there was one I think who had applied three times and on the third time she was selected. So, but that, this is to help um, develop our young people. This is to help them with uh, uh, acquiring skills in, um, in leadership as well. Like I mentioned, in, I think it, it was in the second slide, we had just completed a three-week virtual um, training with high school students from Tonga, Tuvalu, and Fiji. And today they, they finished the virtual engagement and now they're going to work um, at the project, the community projects. One that they can, it's on, uh, envi I think it's environment sustainability. So that now they're going to work in groups. So these are the kind of programs that we want to engage with the, with, uh, with the young people in our region, in our Pacific region. Does that answer your question, Broderick? Yeah, yes, it does. Because, uh, Madam Pala, you know, there's, uh, you know, um, the, our viewers, especially the younger generation, are more keen to know, you know, what are some of the success stories that have sort of come out from these programs. And you just mentioned about the four uh, high school students that have been selected for the uh, space camp programs. One of them, of course, uh, Haley, who's also part of the U.S. Embassy Youth Council, and. Uh, uh, congratulations to her and we wish her all the best for her program next year uh, once things get back to normal. Uh, for Madam Violet, you know, um, just maybe just winding down a bit now, uh, you know, what has, um, you know, a lot of people are just wanting to know the, uh, you know, the, the communications as well as um, you know, how things are sort of, you know, at a, at a hold eh, at this point in time with the whole COVID-19 pandemic, you know. Uh, probably what, I, what the question I was asking was, can, can we see um, uh, some, some changes in a post-COVID-19 in terms of how we communicate, how we sort of engage, in particular with uh, the young people? Um, changes that we are um, expecting. Yeah. Um, yes, I think um, there will be changes because now that we have had COVID and we have switched immediately when we had COVID, we wanted to switch to virtual connections so we can still engage with our with with our youth, with our students that uh, we have been engaging. And there's no like even though there's no face to face. But this engagement will, will go on. And the, the change is, even post-COVID, this engagement will still carry on because we are now in the digital age. And everyone is now, we are, we are now using technology more. And I think uh, there's a lot of investment in, in, um, in having the communication, uh, more communication so that even if something else does, Happen like this, but we are. We, it will still carry on. The services and the and the opportunities will still carry on. Um, we are hoping to uh, have this uh, the next college preparation club. This will carry on because it's this is our new club, and uh, after the eight weeks, then we will have the second cohort. So. This college preparation club. I just want to say that uh, it's not only for 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 Fiji. It's it's the it's a regional cohort, and um, communications are still going to be virtual. So even if it's after um, uh, post pandemic, this will still carry on virtually. This engagement. So I think that's what 
the opportunities will still be there. The opportunities will still be there, and we we encourage you to 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 please take it up, um, take that extra mile, like you said, just take that extra mile and and look for research it. If you are determined enough, you will surely get it. You know, um, I wanted to say one of the quotes that that is really. It's a, it's a really important quote, and it's very meaningful. It says, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So learn as much as you, as you want. Learn as much as you can. You are young. Um, grab the opportunities while you can. We were laughing just uh, before this uh, session. Uh, we never had this kind of opportunities during our time. So the young people these days, I encourage you, please take it up if you... Um, Reach out to your American spaces, reach out to your advising centers and, um, and ask them what opportunities are there for you, specifically for you. Thank you, Brother. No worries. Uh, thank you so much, Renvala. Probably uh, just to wrap things up, you know, any final thoughts or uh, just uh, for just so that our audience could sort of think upon, you know, especially now, now in this current situation that we're living in, uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, discussions about the opportunities, clubs, and all, but, you know, just to end our session this afternoon, what are some of your final thoughts for those that are watching us uh, live on Facebook and, of course, on our Zoom platforms this afternoon? Um, thank you very much to all our viewers today for, for tuning in and listening to this uh, careers program. This is uh, just but a small um, a small um, assistance, if you may, uh, to help you build your career. You have heard throughout the whole week, you have learned skills, you have learned great tips from uh, experts in the field. You have learned so many, so much knowledge this week on careers, that what you could do um, to get to what you want to be. And we, today we have provided you with the resources available and the opportunities that are available. So I would advise all you, uh, the listeners out there, please take the opportunities. If, if this is what you want to do, grab it. This is available for you and we are laying it out for you. It's available. Get in touch with us. We will be collaborating. Um, discover, discover your, your skills, things that you may probably not even aware of. Try, do new, try something new, but do something that you are really passionate about. So thank you all for listening and uh, thank you for this time. Thanks, Roderick. Thank you so, thank you so much for that, Madam Violet. Uh, you know, that uh, concludes our session uh, this afternoon. Uh, again, to Madam Violet, Mr. Saula, and Madam Rani Sese, uh, that are part of our panel, of course, Madam Trevishni. On behalf of the US Embassy Youth Council, can we take this opportunity to thank you all for being part of today's session. And of course, uh, sharing your experiences as well as some food for thought for our viewers that are tuning in live for Zoom and of course uh, at the US Embassy Facebook page. Uh, at this juncture, I'd also like to acknowledge, of course, Madam Tale, Madam Vanessa Chang, Madam Esther Rokombuli, and of course, Madam Thelma uh, Savua for being part of this week's uh, Careers Week. And I'd also like to acknowledge in particular, uh, Mr. Avi Kechkoma, uh, Madam Salanieta, Mr. Kaiti, and Mr. Anit for doing our introductory uh, remarks throughout this week. Thank you guys so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, this concludes our week long event um, commemorating International Youth Month. Uh, we have learned quite a lot from uh, the respected panelists throughout the week. And of course, the opportunities and platforms, uh, Madam Ballet has ended up on a very high note whereby the opportunities are there for us as compared in previous years. So for young people that are watching, this is an opportune time, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, to get involved and get engaged in the conversations. And of course, take these opportunities. You know, they, they don't come that often, but you know, for us in the Pacific, how fortunate we are that these opportunities are provided to us. Uh, with those words, uh, thank you so much and uh, stay safe. Nisa Mollet. Thank you.